A while back, I made a video on how to create this cushion pattern in Blender, but that's kind of an old video. I haven't updated method since then, and uh, I just wanted to show you how to do it. Here are other examples of the exact same pattern with slightly different values. On the left, we get a thinner bevel. On the right, we have uh, dimples that just don't go as deep. You'll understand what I'm talking about once you see the individual steps. So you don't actually need any scripts to uh, create that pattern, but I would recommend at least one, and let me show you why. We need a diamond pattern to get started, and in Vanilla Blender, you can do that with Control F, poke faces, Control F, triangles to quads, and it seems to work most of the time, but every now and then, you will end up with triangles in the center of the pattern. Along the border, they are totally fine, but in the center, we just can't have them, so I would have to manually go in here and select everything that is making a, a triangle, and that might take some time, depending on the situation. So if the vanilla technique works for you, great. If not, I would recommend a script I made called Vitaly Poke. Let me just undo all of that. And it's free. Once you install it, it just shows up here. And I'll click on it. Boop. Works every time. Pure quads. And it has a, a few extra options even. So let's start for real this time. First, we just need a quad selection, something like this. This is good, and let's just select this as well. And you don't have to, but I sometimes make a little cubby hole right here just to fit in the, the little cushion pattern so it doesn't just come outwards too much, but this is completely optional. So I just inset, I'll extrude a little bit, and maybe that's good enough. All right, so to get started, we can use the Vitaly Poke script, or let's just use the vanilla method for now. Poke faces, Control F, triangles to quads, all right. And the next step is to hide everything else, and we do that with Shift H. And now we press Control B. Very important that we use Control B because that's going to allow us to bevel the edges but stay in face mode. If you do this in edge mode, it's going to come out all wrong. So stay in face mode, Control B, and then scroll up once to increase your bevel segments. So don't make these too thick. Uh, this looks better when they're kind of thin like this. Don't overdo it and do this either. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no need to exaggerate. So something like this is fine. And now, here we go. Control I to invert your selection. Control plus to grow your selection. Disable face step. And then Control I again to an invert once more. So that's how we selected the little dimples in the center. The next step is to extrude those. I recommend using this extrude along normals. In this case, this is pretty much a flat surface, so you could extrude uh, just by pressing E, but I'm gonna, I have a hotkey for extruding along normals, which is Alt-E. By default, you get a menu. So I'll just do that, and don't extrude these too much. I feel, uh, or I found that this looks better when they don't go way too deep. So we just keep them a little bit short for now, like, this is good. And now, what we need to do is select these large quads, but we can keep recycling our selection. So, Control plus to grow, Control plus to grow again, Control I to invert. And now we have these large quads. All we have to do now is simply lift this up with Alt S. And that's it, we're pretty much done with the pattern. But what I like to do is before I press Alt S, I might enable my subdivision surface so I can see it in edit mode and sometimes even disable the overlays. And now I can Alt S and see what it looks like at the same time. So again, I found out that if we don't exaggerate things too much, it looks better. I feel that if we just do this, it looks horrible. So I usually just lift it up a little bit. It's up to you to decide how much. And we're pretty much done. If you need some further adjustments, you can scale these individual faces. Not like this. Whoop. Not, you press period, individual origins, and then you press S to scale. And that can sometimes help you tighten up the faces. Let me show you what this looks like with subdivisions and uh, no overlays. There you go, so you can tighten up those edges a little bit sometimes. I wouldn't overdo it, because even though it looks really cool, once you turn off subdivisions, sometimes the faces are like crashing into each other. And there's nothing wrong with that, but if someone ever sees your model, they might be like, are you sure you know what you're doing? <laughs> so it looks cool, uh, but it's an optional adjustment at the end, just scaling the individual faces. Like that. I usually just make sure they don't touch. I think that that's good enough. And finally, don't forget to unhide the rest of your model with Alt-H. And there you go. That's how you make that pattern. For this one, you, you can see it looks a little bit different. Uh, I basically pulled the faces out a lot more. And I also didn't uh, do anything with the initial triangles. So I still made the sort of uh, depression 
the cubby hole <laughs> that I said. Uh, in fact, let's just do that very quickly. So I had a starting selection that looked kind of like this. And then I selected the border. And then maybe you can just select some uh, edges like this or something. Control V. There you go. And uh, we're going to need to remake our selections here like that. And uh, maybe that's too much. Let's just do these. <clears throat> and then the Vitaly poke. And uh, this is where the settings come in handy. I can just deselect all of the triangles, extrude downwards. And now this can be my starting uh, pattern. So I will Shift H, Control B, scroll up once, and then invert, grow without face step, invert again, extrude downwards a little bit. That might have been too much. There you go. Grow, grow, invert, lift up. This time a, a big chunk. <laughs> and uh, hey, there you go. See, kind of, that might even look uh, better.